So welcome everybody to this afternoon's session. I'm Jody Bardai with the HR Center for Staff Development, and I'm also a member of the Innovation Advisory Team. And I'm going to be monitoring our time today and make sure we respect your time. Uh, this session is being recorded, and we do have people that have joined us virtually. It's just we don't, <laughs> not seeing who they are right now. And today, I'd like to introduce you to Melinda Isler. She is the University Archivist. Mm -hmm. Do you have another title? Special Collections Librarian. Special Collections Librarian as well. And today, she's presenting on Finding Ferris, Preserving FSU History in Times of Change. So welcome. As I said, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Ferris and what I collect and how you collect it and how that has changed and how it has changed pretty drastically since 2019. So I was pulling some photos out of the collection. I took one of the oldest ones I could find. That's Woodbridge Ferris in his desk at the State House when he was the governor of Michigan in 1913. And this more recent one, I think I just saw Andrew out in the hallway, is the groundbreaking for the Center for Virtual Learning. Whether it's old materials or new materials, it's still stuff that I'm charged with preserving forever more or less so i'm going to go on to my next slide if i can get you to click why are you not clicking there you go so here's some examples of what i preserve can anyone tell me what the picture is on the left not who it is but what it is anyone know what that is it's a slide Oh, <laughs> as I said, not what the picture itself is, but what exactly is that? So, you know, I don't just have pictures. I have slides. I have um, paper, photographs, records, and by that I mean LP records. I have reels. I have a real recording machine. I actually have two. I got Pat Tobin to fix one for me and help show me how to actually use it so we can play stuff and get it off of there. Um, we also have a large number of videos, VHS, all kinds, cassettes. We have actual films. We have a whole bunch of three-dimensional objects. Three-dimensional objects could range from my fa favorite one is Woodbridge Ferris's phrenology head, which is a little glass head, um, in which it tells you by this, if you have a bump on a certain spot of your brain, Ferris would write you actual letters of recommendation. Like if you had a moral bump, then you would be probably good as a minister, or if you had sort of an analysis bump, you'd probably be good as a scientist, and he literally would write recommendations for students that way. So I'm also responsible for all sorts of objects. Um, 
we have thesis and capstones projects, and these are kind of an interesting example of how things have morphed over time. For example, up through about 2015, if you had a thesis, um, whether it was a master's thesis or if you had a dissertation here, although we didn't have too many of those, they were bound by the library and put into the book collection that I used in my library and part of my position. However, we stopped doing that in the around mid 2000s and we moved them to something online, which is called FUR, which I'm gonna be talking a lot more about later. So sometimes what I keep is the same, but the format in which I keep it changes drastically. Then we have publications and catalogs. My first catalogs are literally on microphone. Then some, someone nicely scanned them all into the website at one point. So now they're on the web. The more recent ones are still on the web. They do not look like a book though anymore. They're in various little pieces of sections that we have to save separately. And then there's also files. Files come on flash drives, like what I have in here, disks, microphone, transparency. We have all kinds of devices that we use. Okay. I don't wanna end the show. I just want you to go on. So this is what I call the chaos of many library systems. With so many different things, you have different tools that we use to find them. This is a picture of my door um, to the archives, which I'm not in currently since I've been temporarily moved over to flight. Um, that's still a nice door picture. So it shows the different ways in which we sort of keep track of what we have. We use SpringShare, which is a library system that allows us to track where things go, if they go out, if they come back in, and it does statistics. We have something called Alma Primo, which you probably know of as uh, Smart Search. We have things in there. We have something called Archive Space, which is used to help do our internal things. The Ferris Institutional Repository, which we're going to talk more about later, and Resource Space, which is a digital asset management system where all the photos go into. Well, I say all of them. I got a little behind track. I think it was around 2018. So all of Bill Blitzinger's photos get dumped in. And that way you can search them yourselves and find them and download them. And we don't have to go and search them for you the way we do in, the, in this current system. Okay. So this is my little pictures of where would you go to find it? And so if you're looking at this from offline, the biggest place to go is where would I find this or how could you get this for me? Your best answer is still sadly enough looking at me in the middle and asking me via email or phone call. Um, we do, as I said in the bottom left corner, you can see that smart search and you can find things in there. If you go to the website and the, right above it, that's a picture of what we call finding aids. We try to create for groups of things that are, are finding aids, like we had a, a, a Helen Ferris collection. We create a list of everything we have. So you could say, I don't need the whole thing. I just need this folder. And that makes it a lot easier, but it's a very time consuming process. So I have about 300 of those and probably about 2000 left to go. Um, so not all of them have that. If you go down to the bottom, it gives you sort of a brief shot of what it would look like. It would literally list it by folder, which makes it much easier to request what you're looking for. If you go over to the right side, this is where things are getting really, really drastically changed. The top part is the Ferris Institutional Repository. It's used for documents right now and only documents. It has the capstones, the theses, minutes from minutes, reports, all kinds of things like that in there, but it doesn't really have any pictures. The system down below, the resource space, has all the pictures. What we are doing is we are in the process of combining these two systems so, and making the bottom part public so that everyone can actually search it. All right. So here's why it happened. And I have to be blunt, like, uh, unlike a lot of people, I can't say this had anything to do with COVID and why we went in this direction. It just sort of happened along the same timeline. So in the fall of 2019, the library had been gradually moving to hosted servers and they were down to two hosted servers, actually three, one for fur, one for a defunct item called uh, Archivist Toolkit, which we had migrated to Archive Space, which was hosted, and the Resource Space. It didn't make a whole lot of sense to the systems library to 
spend a lot of time doing the actual maintenance of servers. And so she suggested we move it to a cloud hosted system. And then she took a really great job at the Getty Institute and left as we were in the middle of getting bids for the project. I can't blame her for that. Here we go. So systems are not cheap. I probably should have had Brooke put grant funded on this one because it's got a couple different grants related to it. We couldn't really afford this by ourselves. So what we did is we did sort of a, a triage in different places. The first spot was, I'm very lucky in that the archives has a um, endowed fund, which we didn't spend very often. It actually dates back to the centennial in 1984. Um, and so I had built up a chunk of change, $10,000. And so I said to the Dean, I said, I can give you $10,000, but we have to do something for the rest. Um, and we were very lucky. I got a Ferris Foundation grant, and then we got an 8,500 grant from the Libraries and Technology from the IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Studies. I have to record it correctly. If I talk about it, I have to show their logo too. So in this grant, we got a grant that paid for student worker assistance. They were paying for a certain part of the project. One of the things we wanted to do with this project was scan more photos and get them into the system. So that's what this person was, actually she got a little bored with it, I have to admit. But for one solid school year, she did nothing but scan photographs because that's where the money was coming from and that's what they said. Um, it also helped us to do the data cleanup and help to pay for this migration cost, which is $20,000 and was a huge amount of money. So our second grant was the Ferris Foundation Merit Grant. They also helped to pay a, a portion of the migration cost and they bought us a really fancy brand new scanner. Um, so that was their contribution. And then the library, uh, because we are actually literally shutting down a server room, yeah, and it was supposed to happen um, last May, but we're gonna talk about why that didn't happen. But when it happens, it will save the library a lot of money. They don't have to pay for the uninterrupted power source, the various accoutrements you need, need in there. So, the, so Dean Bentley said to me, well, if we close all that down and don't have to pay for that, then I can help pay the maintenance costs that you have to pay every year. Because he said that's still cheaper than running a server room. So that was how we sort of funded that. He also gave us this computer from the library. So we're going to look at some of the things that this is playing with that will be going into it eventually. Um, Smart Search does not have really good links. If you go into Smart Search, sometimes to it, it's really good if you want to find a book that I have, but it's not really good about finding things that I have in either the photo database or in, in FUR, the individual items. But that's gonna change once we finish this migration is that we'll be able to migrate it more seamlessly into the Alma system, the smart search and be able to use it. Okay, this was part two of the project, which was sort of an add-on, but something I'm really excited about. So what I meant by scanning local photographs, we do scan local photographs. Part of this project that we did as part of the IMLS grant is that I was speaking to people in um, local agencies. I started out with the Macosta Historical Society. I went to the Big Rapids Public Library. We went then to actually the city, referred me to Roger Schmidt. I think that's his last name. So we have been in contact with him. We have been talking to Barrington Newspaper and we have been talking Barrington Historical Museum and also the Remus Historical Society. And what we have offered to do for them and is that we will scan their photos, put it into our system. And as part of our system, what's going to happen to this is it gets picked up by something called DPLA, the Digital Public Library of America. So what we will do is then, then we give their photos back, but it's going to be in a special collection that says this came from this institution. So they'll get the public, the benefit of someone else scanning it, someone else giving them the credit so that they'll be identified and people will be able to find them easier. So that is an example of one of the photos, my friend, students. So 
This is again the brief update of what Ferris does. It does capstones, minutes, news reports, Senate records. It does have stuff in it from Kendall. It is a little clunky though. It was designed in 2007 and it really did need to be updated. This is what it's going to look like. Um, this is a project that has taken longer than I really ever thought it should, but a lot of it was out of my control. Apparently the migration of what I was doing was harder than they thought. Um, so we started out, the first thing we did is we went to resource space and we gave them access to the servers and we worked with um, Jim Hilliker on this because I don't actually have access to the servers myself. All I have is a way to get into them if I'm sitting in the server room. So they got them all out. They've got them all into this new system. And so those are there, you can see at the top, I didn't put a picture. You can put pictures on the collection yet. I hadn't done it yet, but you can see how it's going to show you a big screenshot of all the photos you can take. This was a parade. And so it, it will show you, these are all photos that Bill Bitzinger took and that's why it says uh, the university photographer. So this is an example of, in the old one, it's very, if you're used to fur, it's a very sort of, Here's a list, here's a sublist, here's a sublist, sublist, sublist. This system is a little different. It's more take it and search. And then you can search within collections and you can search within sub collections if you want. Or you could just do one giant search there, which is what you can do. Um, so they got that done. Then they were going to do fur at the end of the summer. And then we accidentally got blocked. And so they couldn't get to things. For they, they could, my email, I couldn't get any emails from them for two months. Once we realized that was going on, we got back to work. And apparently, fur was a lot more complicated because of the sub collections than they thought. They were going to have it done in November, and they were going to have it done in December. Then I had a phone call with them yesterday, and they have assured me they have set up a test instance by today, end of today, so I can look at it, I can review it, make sure everything's going in correctly. And then they will finish loading it next week. Fingers crossed. They will actually get it done this time. But it was very complicated because of the way the structure was in what was formerly a DSpace instance. And this is Islandora. There are many different open source products you can choose to use for institutional repositories. So at that point, I've put a few photos of the, of the library collection in. But at that point, I can put in the rest of the ones from the institutions. And then hopefully by April, it will be all ready to go. Mm -hmm. and so there you go. That's a picture of when they were building the library. You can see many pictures of the library. So the question is, where are we gonna land? Hopefully we're gonna land with the migration being done next week. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, and as soon as that's done, I clean up the data and then I get it ready to send it off to DPLA. So it won't be available just on campus, but also elsewhere. If we decide there are certain collections that don't go into DPLA, DPLA is most interested in the photos. We probably aren't gonna put all of the Academic Affairs Council minutes, meeting minutes into DPLA. They're not as interested in that, but they are interested in the photos. So that will give us increased visibility. It will also, in a decrease of staffing time for me, make it easier for people to search themselves instead of having going back to the find Melinda and ask her where it would be and how you get it. Um, so it makes it more accessible for everyone on campus. So like I said, um, it also actually does, does help uh, when people don't want to come in and physically look at photographs, we can just scan them and send them that way. And then they're available not just to that one person, but they're available to everyone through this system. So that's in short what I've been doing for the last three years, um, among other things. I don't know if anyone has any questions for me. Does, does this include like uh, research that was done by former faculty? My son was looking for a specific study of the water of Clear Lake. And if you yes. have it. But, yes. Okay. In your case, that's a paper, paper yep. document 
which as soon as I can find it in the giant pile over in Center Eyes, my students were looking for it this morning. So. Oh, okay. So that was that is a paper-based product. It doesn't mean we couldn't take those and scan those. That's always mm -hmm. a possibility because they're actually just stapled together. Okay. So that, like I said, we are always welcome if you know anyone who has any or things that they want, whether in paper or not, we can still scan them and put them in. Okay. And it's a great resource for uh, students that are doing longitudinal studies of things. Yes. And that's, that was a great series. So what she's talking about for anyone who is online or, or watching a recording is that this is the, what's the name of the department? There, it wasn't environmental it was, studies it was, exactly. It was environmental health. Environmental health, which is, a, is now a defunct um, College of Health Professions program. They did surveys every year and they would, they would pick a different location. They would go out, they would do surveys, they would take pictures. I had some people from the rest area up in Paris who were trying to find documentation and pictures and they found them in those. So, right. Do we have any other questions? Let me check the chat for you and see if anyone's anything on there. I didn't see anyone. So you're going to move back to alumni, right? Yes. Okay. Hopefully in a year. Yeah. If I'm lucky, I keep saying maybe next fall because they won't be done with the they won't be done with the courts. Right. But MySpace, they took like three bidders through and they said, all we have to do is you know rip the ceiling out do the HVAC and complete asbestos abatement. They're, okay. not, they're not really altering my space. Okay, cool. Then I'd only have two locations to run back and forth to. Yeah. All right, questions. I didn't see anything in chat as far as questions. They asked about sharing your screen. I thought we did. Hmm. Yeah, I think we did too. It might have been an early question before we had started. All right, I thought we had done that before. Okay. So can someone in chat please type in there now whether they, they had seen all of the slides or not? Because I can at least flip through them briefly. That's not what I wanted. Cancel. Cancel. Didn't want that. Stop showing that. Okay, well, no one said this. This is being recorded. So if you want to go back and look at the slides, you should be able to do that later. I believe they'll be sharing them. It were going better than it, than I had hoped, I'd actually be able to show you the demo and we could play with it, but it is not in a good, it's not quite there yet. Software never goes smoothly. No, it doesn't. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. yeah. I'm letting you out a little early. I don't know how to stop the recording on here. <laughs> I'll stop the share.